Hi, it's Dwyer. It's December 23rd, 2020. Let me take this opportunity to wish everyone here, regardless of your faith, a very happy holiday season, right? I hope Santa is very kind to you if you believe in Christmas. I hope whatever happens, happens that you want to happen. Uh, whatever faith you are a part of. Okay. Um, very grateful to be on YouTube. Very grateful to have, in my opinion, a simply spectacular subscriber base here on YouTube and, uh, very grateful for you. Okay. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Canelo versus Callum Smith post fight. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, Abia Culpa here, I was wrong on the fight. I had Canelo winning by KO. Gambling lesson for me, I should have been more cautious on the fight. No matter how battered Callum Smith was, he entered the fight an un beaten champion. He has the heart of a champion. He simply was not going to lose this fight without putting up a hell of a fight, which he did, right? I congratulate Callum Smith on going the distance. The pre-fight video is still up and will remain up. Now let's pause this video for a moment to acknowledge excellence. At a time when we have too many unbeaten guys at the top of the super middleweight division, 168 pounds, right? Callum Smith was unbeaten entering this fight. David Benavides, Caleb Plant, Billy Joe Saunders are all unbeaten today. At a time when these guys aren't fighting each other, you have Canelo who's just arrived at 168, who's already fought two reigning super middleweight champions, Rocky Fielding and a previously unbeaten Callum Smith. Now understand, between those two fights, he fought reigning IBF middleweight champion Danny Jacobs in a unification match at 160 and reigning light heavyweight champion Sergei Kovalev at 175. Let's be as clear as we can. This is a great fighter in the middle of a great run, right? This is Hall of Fame stuff. Whoever you believe is the best in the sport pound for pound, right? And I lean toward Terrence Crawford. Just understand that Canelo has to be a finalist on your very short list of the best in the sport pound for pound. Now let's talk about this fight. The flow of the fight was all wrong for Callum Smith, right? Callum Smith. Let me say this, Callum Smith is a KO puncher. He wants to be on his front foot. He has a lot of knockouts. He wants to engage with you. He's a front foot guy. He's not a back foot guy. You need a guy who's a back foot guy if you're going to deal with Canelo. You need a guy who favors jabs, who understands the concept of pumping a jab more than you do a guy who pays his mortgage with hooks, which is what Callum Smith likes to do. Right now, let's talk about the problems he faces in this fight. Number one, and it's a big problem that he never gets around. He's facing an excellent fighter defensively. Now understand, 
I feel that Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport pound for pound. Canelo has dramatic KOs on his resume. You notice even heavy-handed guys like Golovkin are hesitant to just dive in on Canelo. Right? But what I want people to do here is to revisit the first round. Because it's an exemplar. It's an exemplar on how to do certain things. This is a great fighter. So you'll notice Canelo wants to cut off the ring. Canelo wants to get inside. Right? Canelo has figured out that in this era of oversized fighters depleting themselves to make weight, in this era where Callum Smith is 6'3 and he's fighting at 168. David Benavides is 6'1 and he's fighting at 168. Caleb Plant is 6'1 and he's fighting at 168. Put differently, all three of those guys are taller than former heavyweight champions Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., who recently fought in a celebrity boxing match. Look at the heights. Canelo has figured out what Joe Fraser knew, what Dwight Cowie figured out, right? Having eaten properly, having that extra dessert, allowing yourself to fill out and fighting these depleted guys, these bigger guys who really belong in a bigger division gives you decided advantages. So Canelo, who's under 5'9", what I want people to do is to look at his face off with Floyd Mayweather. Right, folks? Canelo's really 5'8", maybe 5'7 and a half. Right? Understand, Canelo realizes that against a six foot three guy and Canelo's cerebral, right? Let me say this about Canelo and Floyd Mayweather. While they both had a lot of gifts, right? Canelo's a blessed puncher. Mayweather, in my opinion, is a freak athlete when he's younger, right? You know, think Roy Jones Jr., right? Freak athlete, more athletic than his opponents when he's younger. Whatever physical attributes these guys have, their mental sides are what give them the edge on their opponents. So, Canelo is thought out. He's figured out that he's shorter. So when he bends at the waist, he's figured out that you can't find his body. Right? He's also figured out that when he's facing a 6'3 guy, that 6'3 guy can't hide his body. Canelo, wicked body puncher, had a lot to work with here. If a defensive match broke out between these two, Canelo would have the advantage. Canelo has even figured out that his left hook has what I call ring coverage. By the way, Floyd's left hook had ring coverage. Look at the Diego Corrales fight. Well, Canelo does too. But Canelo's interesting because Canelo will throw that left hook even when he knows it's going to miss. He has some Lennox Lewis in him. He'll throw that left hook just to remind not just the opponent that he has firepower. But the judges as well. In about the third round of this fight, I believe Canelo just throws that left hook for sport. Just to shake up Caleb Smith. Right? Just to make sure Callum understands, player, enter the pocket at your own risk. Well, let's focus on Callum Smith's best round. I believe it's the first round of the fight. He comes out, he has an eight inch reach advantage. But understand, mentally, 
He's not a jabber. Could you imagine Ali or Larry Holmes with an eight inch reach advantage? Could you imagine Sonny Liston with an eight inch reach advantage on you? I'm telling you, even sluggers, George Foreman, great jab. Could you imagine George Foreman with an eight inch reach advantage on you? But that's not how Smith sees himself. So understand that first round happens. Smith, believe it or not, isn't trying to take full advantage of the eight inch reach gap. Right? And he's not a back foot man. So he's not dancing around like an Ali would with an eight inch reach advantage, letting the shorter man know, hey, you're going to have to get through the jab for this fight to start. No, he's not that guy. He's actually trying to close the gap. <laughs> I'm still amazed by it. He's trying to close the gap. As he's fighting, in my opinion, one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Now, it's interesting because Canelo, who's defensively minded, he's defensively blessed. That's a huge part of Canelo's game. Canelo doesn't want the fight to be rough and tumble. So you'll notice in the first round, as Callum Smith is getting in a little bit of a rhythm early, you'll notice that Canelo, the body puncher, who wants to get inside and touch your body, the heavy-handed guy, I think he hits harder than Smith. You'll notice Canelo, as he's trying to get inside, when Smith starts moving forward, Canelo starts moving backwards. Canelo, even as he's cutting off the ring. By the way, this fight is a textbook on how to cut off the ring. Canelo is excellent at it. Again, mental side of boxing. You look at a Canelo fight, he's doing so much so well you understand this guy is thought out whatever the sense of panic whatever is happening around him canelo is methodical he's calm so the first round happens and here's the dynamic callum smith is throwing some punches doesn't pump the jab that's simply not who he is. He thinks he's the bigger man, right? Bigger men suffer from a disease. They think they can impose themselves on you. They think they're Goliath. He's trying to intimidate a guy who knows a secret. The secret Canelo knows is he should have been fighting Frank Sanchez, the heavyweight, on the fight card. Not Smith. Understand, Canelo trains with Frank Sanchez. Canelo spars with heavyweights. I think Canelo understands, pound for pound. He's one of the biggest punchers in the sport. Right? He hits hard with both hands. He's a covert Anthony Joshua in terms of punching power at 168 pounds. That's who he really is. People don't realize it. Right? He has the cute nickname Canelo, which means cinnamon. Right? He's soft-spoken in interviews. He looks friendly and stuff like that. No, this guy's a puncher. So here's a puncher. And he's defensive. So here's a puncher looking at Callum Smith trying to Try to crash the pocket. Now, rather than take the next step forward and have this disintegrate into a shootout early, Canelo realizes that he's the better boxer than Callum Smith. Right? He's not fighting Ali. He's not fighting Larry Holmes. He's fighting Callum Smith. So here you have a puncher. Callum Smith's trying to crash the pocket. Canelo takes a step back. 
several times. You'll notice the trend. Canelo maintains distance unless he's the one stepping forward. So Callum Smith comes forward, Canelo moves backwards. Then as Callum Smith readjusts because he can't reach Canelo, because Canelo's low, because Canelo has his hands up, because Canelo's head's on a swivel, because Canelo's reading your movement to the point where when Callum Smith starts to throw a right hand, Canelo's already leaning away from it. So, of course, as Callum Smith readjusts, you'll notice it's Canelo who then starts to move forward. So we get a textbook on how to cut off the ring. Callum Smith then starts moving backwards because he's 6'3". He needs room to extend his arms. He throws some uppercuts on Canelo, but again, Canelo's defensively blessed. He's mindful of distance. You'll notice Canelo, as he's coming forward, will lean back. Right? Folks, Canelo's a guy who's worked on his game. This is not the same fighter who fought at 154. He's a better athlete than you think. He moves his upper body. His head's on a swivel. Just look at where his hands are. The reason he's fighting Callum, Callum Smith, apart from it being short notice for Smith, is I'm sure Canelo knew all about the John Ryder fight. He understands that if you can get inside on Smith, Smith doesn't know what to do against a shorter fighter who can get underneath him. Against Rocky Fielding, Smith knows what to do, but not against a shorter fighter who can get defensive. And let's not kid ourselves, Canelo is much better defensively than John Ryder. Canelo also knows that if Smith leans forward, which Smith does repeatedly in this fight, Canelo's going to have access to his head. Canelo has a sudden left hook, just like Floyd Mayweather. Just like, let's give pub where it's due. Khaled plan at 168. So what you have here, is a shorter guy with better defense who can hide his body, who is hard to land shots on his head, right? Very hard to land shots on his head against a guy who doesn't have that stiff a jab, who's not committed to the jab, and who can't stick and move, right? Callum Smith doesn't have what I call a mobile jab. His jab's not going to bust you up. And because he's not a jabber, he doesn't know things that jabbers know intuitively. So, here's what Callum Smith could have done to make this fight more interesting. Canelo has his hands up. Understand, defense is a big part of Canelo's game. I don't care how dramatic the KOs look, how dramatic Canelo's shots to the body look, right? How decimated guys like Liam Smith, Callum's brother, looked after some of Canelo's body shots in the middle of their fight. Understand Canelo's defensive. He's mental. He's worked on technique. It's not just power. He's worked on technique. Neek. This is a mental fighter. Right? And so what Callum Smith needed to do was to hit Canelo's gloves with the jab. He should have educated the crowd or the judges more precisely with the fact that he was controlling distance. Right? This would have required him to feel comfortable not engaging Canelo, making this a jab fest early, building up rounds, getting ahead of Canelo on the scorecard, 
right? Being on his back foot, lateral movement. In other words, you don't want to get caught up against the ropes with body puncher Canelo in the pocket, hitting your ribs. If you're a back foot guy, you already know spacing. You know where you are in the ring. If you're dancing, you want room to dance. Callum Smith is accustomed to being alpha, not being beta. Right? You have to be the dance partner. If you're going to get up on your toes, stick and move. Let a shorter man know, player, you're shorter. I have eight inches of reach on you. You're going to have to slow me down or wait until I'm tired later in the fight to get close enough to me to hit me. Callum Smith wasn't that guy. Right? Understand, he's very talented. He's excellent. But he's facing a shorter guy with shorter arms who has bursts of hand speed, who's defensively superior, and who has prodigious punching power. This is a guy who KO'd the light heavyweight champ. Now he's fighting. Seven round, uh, seven pounds lighter, right? Think about it professionally. Canelo has already KO'd the champ one division up. In sparring, he spars with guys like Frank Sanchez. Sanchez was the heavyweight on the undercard who knocked his man out of the ring. So here's Canelo. He's not phased by Callum Smith's power. Because he's defensively minded, Callum Smith is having problems landing punches. Understand, when you're with a guy who's elusive, who has upper body movement like Canelo, you can't rely on your counterpunching capability. Because you make Canelo miss, then you throw, guess what? Canelo's making you miss. Much tougher matchups for Canelo from a fight style perspective would be Caleb Plant, who we mentioned earlier. Plant has his own here trigger left hook. I suspect, as I've said in prior videos, that Plant is a lefty fighting right-handed. I believe he's inverted. In any event, look at his fight against, I believe it's Mike Lee. Look at that left hook. It's here, trigger. More importantly, Plant can move. Right? He can move. So I believe Plant is the kind of guy who would enter the fight against Canelo and who would understand that he would need to open up a lead after six rounds. In other words, the first six, Plant would try to have at least a 4-2 or 5-1 margin on Saul Alvarez. Now, let's be clear here. There is politics in boxing. When you see a guy like Canelo, who's making tens of millions of dollars per fight, he feeds a lot of people. The industry makes a lot of money on him. The Zone wants to sell their, you know, fight service even after a lawsuit where Canelo sues them. They were able to patch things up. They have Canelo on shortly thereafter, and they're paying him tens of millions of dollars. That's the power Canelo has in the marketplace. So I believe when you encounter a Canelo or a Manny Pacquiao, We'll just name names here. That fighter enters the ring, in my opinion, politically, with a 2-0 advantage. They're up two rounds already. 
What do I mean by that? I don't mean that the judges' scorecards have 2-0 on them before the start of the first round. But what I'm saying is that the close rounds, where you're saying, who won that round? Early, judges are going to give that to the cash cow. After all, the cash cow has made the event possible. Right? You know, Deontay Wilder, I'd look at his fights and I saw countless people. Luis Ortiz, for example. Both fights. Uh, winning the early rounds. Gerald Washington, another fight where I saw Gerald Washington winning the early rounds. Like you, I've seen my share of boxing matches. Then, of course, Wilder was winning fights by KO. But the KO is just the beginning of it, right? You see a guy win by KO and you say, let me see what these scorecards look like, right? Because you're thinking about handicapping future fights involving the guy. and You want to see what worked and what didn't work. Then you look at the scorecard and you're like, what? They gave Wilder that round? That's how.